60 minutes rewind. His name is Walter McMillan, known to his friends as Johnny D, and he's been on death row in Alabama's Holman prison for almost six years. Was he, in fact, the man who walked into a dry cleaning store in Monroeville, Alabama in November of 1986 and robbed and murdered the clerk? Or did they get the wrong man? And is the real murderer still out there somewhere? A jury was convinced they got the right man, but you may not be after you watch this story. The clerk who was murdered was 18-year-old Rhonda Morrison, the only child of Charles and Bertha Morrison, who have no doubt that Walter McMillan did it and want him executed as soon as possible. Johnny D says they want to execute the wrong man. You didn't kill Rhonda no, Morrison? No, sir. I ain't never seen Rhonda Morrison a day in my life. God knows I ain't. Where were you on the day of the murder? At my house. Did you ever go into Monroeville on, on the day of the no, murder? No, sir. You never went into town? Never went to Monroe, a period. McMillan is certainly not a typical death row inmate. He had a good job in the logging business, no prior felony convictions, and lived with his family near Monroeville his entire life. Police didn't arrest McMillan until seven months after the Morrison murder, a crime which had the police stumped. They had no fingerprints, no telltale ballistics tests, no physical evidence of any kind linking McMillan or anyone else to the crime. McMillan's friends and family testified he was at a fish fry at his house on the morning of the murder, working on the pickup truck he supposedly drove to the cleaners. We talked to his friend, Jimmy Hunter. And that was the truck you were working on that That's day? That's right. The transmission was out of it. Was out of the truck? Yeah, I had to clean out. You had so to take you, them out. <laughs> you couldn't have driven the truck anyway? No. Johnny D's attorney, Brian Stevenson, has appealed the cases of more than 100 death row inmates. I, I have never had a case where the state's only evidence of guilt comes from one person, where there's no motive, there's no physical evidence, uh, there's no corroborating circumstances, there's nothing but the word of one person. That one person is Ralph Myers, a career criminal who's now doing 30 years for another murder. Myers testified he was in Johnny D's pickup truck outside the cleaners when McMillan went in to rob the store. Some point you heard gunshots. Right. When you went inside, what did you tell them you saw? I told them that I had seen a young girl laying on the floor with her mouth open. Dead. And what was he doing? Taking money from out of a paper sack and put it into a briefcase. Did he have a gun? Yeah, I had told the court that, yeah. Now, that, that testimony put him on death row. Right. Was it true? No, sir. Not at all. Nowhere near true. So why did Ralph Myers testify against McMillan? At the time, he was awaiting trial and facing a possible death sentence for murder. He says an Alabama Bureau of Investigation agent used that to pressure him to lie about McMillan. So he tells me, he says, well, all you got to do is, is, is you go along with what we want you to go along with. And, uh, and he says, I promise you, well, he says, I've done got it fixed with the DA, I've done got it fixed with the judge, and you won't get but 30 years. So 30 years and you'd be eligible for parole after? Well, uh, more or less probably like 10. So you're looking at 10 years versus the electric chair. Right. Why should anyone believe you now when you're taking back what you said at the trial under oath? Well, it's like this. I don't know the words for that, but I can tell you this much. Right is right and wrong is wrong. And for a man to straighten his own life out, he must tell the truth. He must try to do what is right. And that's what I'm trying to do. District Attorney Tommy Chapman wasn't involved in McMillan's original trial, but is now handling the state's case. Let me ask you about Ralph Myers. How would you characterize Ralph Myers? Ralph's about as low as you can get. He's a scum. A liar? Yes, sir, I'd characterize him as a liar, particularly now. Chapman says he's going to indict Myers for perjury, not for what he said at the trial, but for what he's saying now. I intend to ask the Baldwin County Grand Jury to indict him for perjury. Because of that? Because of his? Recantation. Now, if he's convicted, mm -hmm. what happens to his shot at parole? He'll probably get life. I hope he does. 
So it seems to me that he's got more to lose by saying he's recanting than by saying he sticks by his story. He can't lose his life by recanting. He could lose his life for not changing his story. You know, the prison has its own way of dealing with people who are snitches. Ralph Myers is a snitch. I'm sure Ralph Myers would agree that uh, any threat he was under in prison is nothing like the threat he's under now, having recanted his testimony and opened himself back up to perjury charges, uh, to capital murder charges. What Myers has done is take a pretty radical risk. But District Attorney That's Chapman the says there were good reasons to believe what Myers said in court. You said that there were details that he gave. What were the details that About no one else knew? That her mouth was open, the position of her body, uh, the way he, uh, uh, the way her clothes were, those type things. Ralph Myers, in none of his trial testimony, in nothing that has ever been presented in the court, has ever said anything about the victim's body that is consistent with the way in which the victim's body was found. Myers told police that Rhonda Morrison's body was lying face up behind the cash register. But the first police officer on the scene found the body lying face down behind a partition in another part of the cleaners. We asked former police officer Woodrow Eichner exactly what he found. I found a young lady in the northeast corner of this building laying face down. Is it possible that the body was dragged from the counter to the back where you saw it? In my opinion, no. There was particular dust that was around this body, and there was no evidence that the dust was disturbed. You, you think that the body was where it fell when she was shot? Yes, sir. But did the prosecutor talk to you at all about it? Yes, sir, the prosecutor did talk to me about it. In fact, he asked me to testify that the body had been drugged. The prosecutor asked you to testify that the body had been dragged to the back of the cleaner? Yes, sir, he did. And what did you say? I said, no, sir, I will not testify because I saw no evidence that the body had been drugged. The former prosecutor denies he ever asked Eichner to testify the body had been dragged. Still, if Myers really did see the body near the counter, no one has been able to explain how it could have been dragged to where the police found it without leaving telltale signs, including bloodstains on the floor. What we now know is that the story that Myers told is simply not true. In fact, even before the trial, Myers told four psychiatrists at Taylor Hardin and Alabama State Hospital that his statements implicating McMillan were bogus and were coerced out of him by the police, specifically by an agent of the ABI, the Alabama Bureau of Investigation. Why well, I'm at Taylor Hardin, I tell the state doctors up there, hey, look, this is what the ABI officer is wanting me to do. He's wanting me to set this man up to tell lies on this man, to get this man put on death row. He says, what man are you talking about? And I said, I'm talking about Johnny D. Matt Millen, a man who lives in Monroeville, Alabama. The jury should have known uh, that uh, a month before the trial took place in this case, Myers had gone to the state hospital and told four separate doctors that this is all a lie. What Ralph Myers may have told those people up there at Taylor Hardin would have been no concern to the state of Alabama. And uh, uh, I'm confident that there was no willful uh, intent on the part of the state of Alabama to withhold those records. Johnny D. McMillan wouldn't be on death row today if it were just Ralph Meyer's word against his. By law, the state needed a corroborating witness to back up at least some of what Meyer said. Bill Hooks, a former inmate, was that witness. He said he saw McMillan's truck parked at the cleaners. Bill Hooks testified in court that as he was driving down the highway that Saturday morning, he saw Johnny D. McMillan leave the cleaners, walk over to his pickup truck, and get in on the passenger side, and with Ralph Myers at the wheel, pull off down the highway. In court, Hooks, who worked as an auto mechanic, said he knew it was McMillan's truck because it was a lowrider, a truck that's been customized to sit low to the ground. McMillan's lowrider was also placed at the cleaners by another witness. But Clay Cast, the mechanic who converted McMillan's truck, told us he did that work six months after Rhonda Morrison was murdered. Sure. It was, she got murdered in November of 86, and this we're talking May of 87. So if Billy Hook says he drove by there and saw Johnny D's truck and it was a lowrider, 
then what you're saying is that, that Hooks is a liar. Yeah, if, if he drove by there and when Rhonda Marston was murdered and he said it was a low rider, he's lying. You Bill Hooks? Yes. I'm Ed Bradley from 60 Minutes. I just want to ask you a couple questions. OK mm -hmm. with you? Hooks was in jail awaiting a trial for burglary when he gave police a statement identifying McMillan's truck as a lowrider. They got my statement. You want to know anything, go ask them. Right. But you said that you saw him with that lowrider truck he had, right? They got everything on that statement. But that's what you said in the statement. You said he had that lowrider truck. If it's in the statement, yeah. If it ain't in the statement, no. Right. So if it's in the statement that you said a lowrider truck, and it is in the statement, if, then, it, then if that's, I said, if in the statement I said, if I ain't in the statement, the I didn't see it. Yeah, that's the truth. We have in the statement. He did have the low rider truck. If it ain't on my statement, it's the truth. If it ain't on my statement, it ain't. Did Bill Hooks really see Johnny D. McMillan at the cleaners the morning Rhonda Morrison was killed? Darnell Houston, who was working with Hooks at a used car lot, says no way, because both of them were still at work that morning when Morrison's body was discovered at a quarter to 11. And he was there until what time did you leave? Around 11, a little after 11. And he had not left at hadn't all? Hadn't left. I hadn't seen him left, because there ain't but one way to go out the parking lot. And he didn't go out of that? No, sir, he didn't. You sure of that? Positive of it. Does it bother you that a man may go to the electric chair based on dubious testimony? Well, I wouldn't call it dubious testimony. You've got a man who... Uh, hooks. Hooks. Truly uh, is a very believable witness when you look at the fact that he has no reason, no ax to grind with any of these people, no reason to say these things. That, says Brian Stevenson, is nonsense. He's benefited quite significantly based on his cooperation with the state in this case. He's gotten at least $5,000 in reward money. Uh, they dismissed fines against him. Are, are you saying that the cops offered Hooks a deal and then he testified? Oh, there's no question that Hooks got assistance from the cops in exchange for his testimony in this case. The day that he gave the incriminating statement, the complete incriminating statement against uh, Walter McMillan, is the day that they let him out of jail. Things got pretty good for you after you told the story. Things got pretty good for me, like what? Well, you got out of jail. Charges against you were dropped. You I, did, about I, did, I, did, you about, I did my time. You got about $5,000 in reward money. That's pretty good, isn't it? Well, you go tell somebody if I ain't got time. Uh, but isn't that pretty good? You ask, you ask, I won't care if it don't me. The story will continue after this. During the trial, the jury learned that McMillan was not a model husband. He ran around with other women. One of them was Karen Kelly, who's now doing time for aggravated assault in a case in a nearby county. Did any law enforcement officer ever threaten you or make threatening remarks about your relationship with Johnny Dick? Yes, sir. What did he say? They told me that I was going to prison because of that nigger, and they didn't understand why I wanted to mess with niggers. You're very clear that that's what he said? Yes, sir. Why are you reluctant to say who it was? I'd just rather not say, for my own best interest. I don't know why anybody would care about who slept with Karen Kelly. Black, white has nothing to do with it? I would not think so. Did the relationship w between Johnny D and Karen Kelly ever come up during the trial? Yes, uh, uh, quite uh, unusually, I might add. You know, at the end of uh, Myers' testimony, the state prosecutor uh, stands up and asks Myers, well, do you know who Karen Kelly is? And he says, yes, and uh, does she know uh, Walter McMillan? He says, well, yes, and, and, the, and the prosecutor asks, well, were they good friends? He says, well, yes. W would you describe them as boyfriend and girlfriend? Uh, yes. Well, would you describe Karen Kelly for the jury? Well, yes, she's a white woman. No more questions. What's wrong with our criminal justice system is the fact that uh, uh, people want to come back sometime and second guess juries. Uh, I don't believe there's been any law enforcement misconduct in this case. I don't think anyone's proved it. The prosecutor's job is not to obtain a conviction, it's to achieve justice. And one of the greatest tragedies about this case is that somebody in Monroe County has literally gotten away with murder. If an execution date is set, McMillan, and that, and that day comes and it's time for him to go to the electric chair. Will you be comfortable? Yes. I'll be comfortable with it. Do you think it's fair, just? He had his day, he had his in, day court. in court. He uh, was tried by a jury and they heard the testimony and they believed it. 
McMillan's fate is now in the hands of the Alabama Supreme Court, which is expected to decide soon if he's entitled to a new trial.